Hi, I'm Mark and this is Foothill Paint Fabrication. Today we're going to be helping out a friend of mine that I uh, actually went to high school with and I painted a uh, truck for, a 1954 F100. Uh, I'll put a picture up right now. Uh, we were at a car show. He, was, uh, he sold the truck after several years of owning it, after I painted it, and then, uh, then he's been looking for a replacement car, muscle car, classic car to replace that truck. So uh, we were talking and he brought up that uh, he got a really sweet deal or a friend of his gave him this golf club because it was kind of marred up on top here and he was talking about getting it repainted or painted. So I said, sure, you know, I'll paint it for you. So that's our job for today, um, getting some paint on this thing and uh, hopefully in, knock a few strokes off his game in the meantime with a brand new paint job on it. So let's get to work and see what we can do. Never painted a golf club before, but it uh, can't be that hard, right? Okay, so this is a putter, obviously. It's a tailor-made uh, spider. Get that in the camera there. So the problem with it, let me see if I can show you. You can see the, sh well, not the shadows, there we go, right there. So right here, it's worn off and there's some scratching on the top here. So obviously that's costing him, you know, two or three strokes a game, right? So uh, we're gonna get this painted. He wanted uh, red. So we're not gonna try to match this red, we're gonna do a bright red. I'm pretty sure I have some bright red in stock. And he'd like this black line to stay as a highlight. So originally I was thinking I would come out here and, and leave and take this gray out, but I was just standing here looking at it thinking, well, when he's looking down lining up, if this is red or red with black, I think it'd be nice to have this gray line here to silhouette the whole thing. So I think what we'll do is I'll mask from here and leave this strip right here gray, come around here, and then go all the way back and all the way there, and then we'll paint this top uh, red. And this black looks pretty good right here, so I think what I'll do is I'll just lay a piece of tape in there and cover that up while we paint, and then we'll just peel it away. So I don't know if I'm gonna do single stage or base coat clear coat. I have to check in the cabinet, see what kind of paint I have. It'd be nice to do it in single stage, so I just spray it, uh, let it dry in the park it in the sun, let it cook a little bit and then give it back to them. So um, I'm kind of like in thinking I'd like to lay some black in these two areas too, just to make it look that much nicer. So the red is not gonna match this red. It's kind of a dull uh, maroonish looking red, uh, but it's probably gonna be bright red. I think that's what I have in stock, but I'm gonna dig through there. So uh, the first thing I did was I took this in the house and I ran it under super hot water and uh, I sprayed it down with an ammonia, uh, just dish soap solution and let it soak. And the, so the dish soap uh, helps break away any dirt and grime and stuff like that. And then the ammonia will strip away any waxes. So I don't know what's been sprayed on this golf club or how it's been handled. So I, I let it soak like that. I scrubbed it good w with uh, just a brush scrubby and then rinsed it really well, blew it off, dried it off, and then parked it out in the sun, let it dry. So it's, it's ready to do what we're gonna do to it. So what we'll do first is mask it off and then we'll, uh, then we'll scuff this thing up and then uh, tack it off and get some color on it. So let me, uh, let me look in the cabinet, see what kind of colors we got, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, I think we got a game plan. I found some red. This is uh, Toyota Super Red 2. It's pretty bright red. Then I've got this, which is kind of a more of a duller red, a little bit closer to that, but not quite. So I'm gonna have to open both cans up and figure out what we're gonna do there. I think I, since I can't match this red exactly, I think it's better to go to a di totally different red. So what I'm gonna do is, instead of coming along here, I'm gonna go right here, and we'll just go along there, all the way to here and terminate there, come back around, terminate there. I masked the shaft off, mostly just make sure I didn't scratch it. I went all the way up. And then what I'll do, uh, I didn't have any black. Um, I'm out of black single stage. So uh, my buddy Dave across the road, he had some one shot black. So what I think I'll do is I'm gonna paint this and then I will lay in some black down inside that groove right there to give it some highlights and then we'll mask this black off as well. So we'll have black there, black there, red here and red here. I think it'll look pretty good. So 
let me uh, let me get this masked off. So what we'll do is we'll mask it first, and then I'll scuff this surface. So because it's impossible to scuff a wrong, you know, perfect line. So we'll mask that. I'll mask the whole club off pretty good, and then um, then I'll scuff uh, the areas I'm going to paint. And I, I got to see if I got any pinstriping tape. Otherwise, I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to stripe that black and recover it up because it's in good condition. There's no reason to paint that. So let me see what I can do. And then uh, I'll see what kind of tape I got, and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so I don't have any uh, pinstriping tape that thin. I don't actually, I don't have any at all. I thought I had some quarter inch. So I started masking. So what I did was I laid some masking in on the edge there, and it wrinkled up around here. And then I'm just going to take a razor blade and just lay it on that corner, just real careful, and just carve that right out of there. And then I'll make a, a, a cut right across here and then we'll peel that off. So let me see if I can do that on camera here. Okay, so I'm gonna just cut on this edge and there should be a little sliver of tape. So I'm just gonna take the razor blade, real shallow so it doesn't dig into the uh, gray. We're gonna get a nice even sliver across there. Hopefully, I'm just putting a little down pressure on the razor blade, brand new razor blade, right to the end there. We've got that little hair coming off. Then I'll just turn around and we'll go back the other way. Same angle. And keep going right to the end there. Just like that. And we just peel those right out of there. And then I need to make my final cut right across here and then I can peel that piece out. So. Let's see what I can do here. I'm gonna hold this, and lay it in. Now I don't want to put a deep gouge in that gray that we're saving. Just gonna kind of eyeball it here, freehand it, and that should have went all the way through the tape. We're just going to tug that off there. Hopefully we can just peel this off. We're going to have a nice clean line right across there. I'll peel it back on itself, help cut. So we get a nice clean line. Just like that. Now all I have to do is do a little trim right there, stick a piece of tape back down inside there, mask the whole thing, make myself a, a strip of uh, eighth inch or whatever that's going to be, uh, lay that in there, and then we can scuff the whole thing up. So let me get this cut and that piece in there, <clears throat> and I'll bring you back. There we go. I'm going to push over to the other side. And I'll lay it down flat. There we go. So now I'm going to take the razor blade and attempt to cut right along that edge. Not sure how to do this, to tell you the truth. Kind of want to just scrape both sides at the same time, but I don't think that's a good idea. So I'm just going to lay this blade down here and just do like we did the other side. to go around this shaft here. Okay. Looks like we got it. So we're home free, we just have to mask uh, across the face here and then uh, the rest of this body and we can scuff it up and we'll spray some black on it. 
Okay, it's ready to be scuffed. So I'm going to take a Scotch Brite pad. So all these grooves in here feel pretty minute. So I'll probably uh, go ahead and take some 600 to it real quick just to make sure it's good and scuffed. Okay, we got some 600. I want to make sure I don't catch the tape, which it feels like it's just in underneath. We're going to lightly sand this in the direction of the tape is going so we don't peel it back. Careful along these edges. All right, feels pretty smooth. Get that down inside there. Okay, let's uh, prep the table, blow this off, mix up some paint, and spray this thing. Okay, so we're, what we're going to use is uh, we're going to use this uh, little Harbor Freight gun. Um, I like this gun because you can uh, tilt the the uh, cup back. And so I can spray straight down. And since this is such a small amount of paint, I'm going to go ahead and just mix it up in this little shot glass. I get these from uh, Smart Final and a whole tube of them. They're great for mixing up just for small touch-ups and stuff like that. And we'll be using this um, bright red. It's a Toyota uh, 88 to 99 Super Red um, off of Toyota. So we're going to stir that up a little bit. And then we're just going to pour it off in here and uh, put a little bit of reducer in it and go ahead and get this sprayed. So now it's not going to take a lot of paint. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the gun right here. I'll blow this paper off. Well, not the best pattern in the world. There we go. Okay, this gun has a little heavy on this side, a little light on the top, so we'll just go ahead and get it sprayed. Let it dry and put another coat on. Okay, we're gonna let that sit. We'll get another coat on it. So I didn't like the way that uh, flowed out. It laid down pretty good after it's starting to dry. So I'm putting a little reducer in the cup. Now this isn't what you would normally do, but this is just a golf club, so it doesn't really matter. Otherwise you would strain this stuff and uh, be real careful. So I'm going to go ahead and let that dry a few minutes and we'll get another coat on it. Okay, so it's uh, set a few minutes. I'm touching the tape over here and it's sticky but it's not gooey. So it's not even coming off on my glove. So I know it's ready for another coat. Let's put a little through here the gun here. We'll get to the part where the reducer is. There we go. All right. Now that looks pretty good right there. I think we're going to stop right there. As soon as I say we're, I'm going to stop, then I hit it again, right? But we don't want a lot of the film thickness on this thing because it'll chip easier, thicker it is. So we're going to let that set a minute and see how it flows out. And if it looks good, that's where, right where we're going to stop. Okay, I waited several minutes and uh, the Single stage float out really nice, so we can get an angle on it. You can see right there, one of the lights through there. It's pretty shiny, not perfect. It is a golf club. I'm not going to polish this. So it, it came out pretty nice. So we're going to wait a little bit before I unmask it. Now, I don't want to wait overnight because the paint may be too hard to unmask, and then it's not going to pull back on the edge of the tape like the way I want it but you don't want to get it too soon where the, the paint is still kind of really gooey. So there's a point there between when it's going to get hard and it's still kind of soft, somewhere in between there, you kind of do it by experience, 
where uh, if you pull the paint or the tape back, excuse me, pull the tape back too soon, then um, it, it's kind of gooey on the edge. But if you wait too long, then it'll actually try to pull off of the tape, off the top of the tape, and then flop back down onto the part so you don't get that crisp line. So I'm gonna let it sit for a little while. It's probably 82 degrees in the shop. The wind's blowing outside a little bit. I had the door open, so there's a little speck of dust in there, but hey, it's a golf club, so I'm not gonna worry about it. So we're gonna let it sit a little bit, and then we'll come back and we'll get it unmasked. Okay, so we've let it dry a little bit, so I'm gonna put my finger right here on the tape where it got as many coats as it did on top there. And I can put my finger onto it, and I can feel the wet paint, but it doesn't come off on my finger. So it got quite a bit of coats right there, and you can see some came off on my finger. So we're right in between where I had to push really hard. Now, if I stuck my finger right in there, I'd leave a mark. But over here, it's doing better. See, so it's not coming off on my finger. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, I'm going to pull back over here and just pull this tape back and then pull back on itself. And uh, hopefully we don't screw this up. Get a tape. Uh, razor blade here and always unmask pulling the tape back on itself so it kind of peels back real tight and uh, it kind of cuts as it comes back you never want to lift up or straight up or even at a 30 degree angle you want to come back on itself and slightly away and then that will just tear uh, the paint along that line and helps you out quite a bit Perfect right there. Got a little smudge of red, but I'll be able to get that off. All right, I'm just going to leave it alone, let it sit overnight, and let it dry. And then tomorrow we'll come in and uh, I'll see if uh, hopefully my hands aren't too shaky. We're going to take some of that one shot and a brush and we're going to lay a nice little black line in there. Um, I may lay a little masking tape on there to bail me out. I think I probably end up doing that. But looks great so far. So we got a good one on this. We're going to let it dry. Got a little, looks like a little speck of something in there. I might end up having to polish this after all because that's just the way I am. But let's come back tomorrow and see how it looks. Okay, it's the next day. It's uh, dry. I got everything unmasked. So now I want to lay uh, some hot shot black paint right in here. So uh, my hands aren't the steadiest. So we're just going to lay this tape down in here, stick it down right there and get a little piece of uh, paint stick I trimmed off with a knife since I can't get my fingers down inside there. I'm just trying to lay it down in the radius. that rub down real good. Kind of get that started. The blue tape would have been nice to use, it's just not sticky anymore. So it was the paint would have crept right up underneath it and ruined it. So there we go. All I gotta do is the other side. We'll get the black mixed up. I'm not going to worry about the ends. I think when I hit it with a paintbrush, it'll be all right, hopefully. So let me get this other side done. We'll get this hot shot mixed up and then uh, mix up a little bit. I'll pour it off in a little uh, container and then uh, we'll get a crappy paintbrush out here. I don't have a pinstriping brush, but I'll get a little paintbrush and we'll fill that in. There we go. All right. Let's get a little bit out of here. Shouldn't take a lot. Should be more than enough right there. All right, well, no time like the present. Load this brush up here a little bit. I see that bristle hanging out there. I want to make sure that bristle's up. 
Now let's just lay this in here. Cross your fingers. Here we go. Okay, let's do the other one. Just gonna kind of push up to that edge there and let the tension of the paint hold it back. Lay the brush down to get plenty of paint down. And then go around this corner here. There we go. All right, hopefully it didn't creep underneath those tape, that tape. I'm going to let it dry a little bit, and then we're going to peel the tape up. Um, I don't want to peel the tape too quickly because that stuff's still fairly uh, fluid, and it uh, could run up, so we don't want that. I'm going to clean the brush real quick, and then uh, hopefully it'll be ready to unmask by then. I'll bring you back. Okay, I got the paintbrush clean. That's uh, used up a few minutes of my time. Kind of anxious to peel the tape back, to tell you the truth. I don't know if I'm going to screw it up or not. So I'm going to go ahead and peel it back and see what happens here. I think we'll be fine because it goes up the hill on those radiuses, so I don't think it's going to climb up there. One down. That's two. thicker here. Three, that looks pretty good. And last one. Well, the good news is it didn't creep up underneath the tape. Let's let that dry a little bit. I don't want to move the head around and have that stuff run. And then I'll bring it back. We'll take a close look at it and call this one done. I got my little FPF there. Painted that in with the stick and some one shot. Um, I told you I wasn't a pinstriper. Pretty brutal. Anyways, it uh, came out pretty nice. I think he's going to be happy. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, this will last a lot longer than the other top. If it does scratch up, I guess we'll just uh, paint it again for him. Okay, that just about wraps up this video on painting the golf club for a buddy of mine. Um, no guarantees, but I think this paint job should take at least two strokes off his game. Um, it came out really great. So now when he's trying to putt, he's not looking down at a scratched up club head and he can focus on getting the ball in the cup. Uh, it was a fun little project, quick, easy. That's what I like. These drawn out uh, projects kind of eat at you for a while, but it's nice to bust something out really quick for a good friend. So thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint and Fabrication. If you haven't already, uh, subscribe to the channel. I really, uh, really appreciate it. And hit that like button and mash that bell icon so you get notifications every time I release a new video. We'll see you on the next one.